it's Mr. T here with a tutorial on using basic derivative rules to find derivatives of functions and the rewriting skills that are necessary to use sometimes prior to applying the rules. In our last class we went through a discovery exercise and came up with some of these rules by looking at patterns of uh, finding derivatives of similar functions using the limit definition of um, derivatives. Uh, as you've experienced in class, using or finding derivatives using the limit definition is quite tedious, and for a lot of functions, they're with known patterns that we have a set of rules that we can use to speed up uh, finding those derivatives, so we can focus on applying and solving problems as opposed to all the uh, manipulation using the uh, limits. Today we're going to be discussing how to use uh, five rules here. Uh, let's just talk about the rules briefly here. So we have what's called the constant rule. So f of x is some constant a number and if you take the derivative of a constant you get zero. Second rule is the power rule. So we have x raised to a, a power. That power could be an integer. It could be um, a fraction. It could be positive or negative. And when we take the derivative of x to some power, we will be multiplying our result by the original exponent and subtracting one from the exponent to become the new exponent. Our third rule is called the constant multiplier. If we have some function, whatever it is that's differentiable, multiplied by a constant, then we can, when we take the derivative, it's just that original constant times the derivative of our function. We don't usually use this rule uh, too much by itself, but if we combine our simple power rule and the constant multiplier rule, we would get an original function which has a coefficient, a constant, times x to a power, and using those two rules, we would take our coefficient, multiply it by the original exponent, and then again, as in the power rule, subtract one from the exponent. Now, these rules are all for single terms. A lot of times we want to be able to handle expressions that have multiple terms, say polynomials, for example, like it down here. Uh, if we view each term of our uh, function as another function, then a polynomial, for example, is a set of terms that are added and subtracted together. And the sum and difference rule says that you can just take the derivative of each term separately and then add and subtract them together. So if we apply uh, these rules to a simple problem here, we have a polynomial and we're trying to find its derivative. So in the first step, we can apply rule 5 here to take the derivative of each of those parts uh, separately. So we'll take the part derivative of each part separately. So if we go across, now we look at doing the derivative of this part, we have a constant times x to a power, so that's our combined uh, power rule here. So to get the derivative, we're going to take the original exponent times our constant and subtract 1 from the exponent. So we're going to take here 3 times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12x, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. Now again, using sum and difference rule, we'll do this. This again is a constant times x to the nth power. So we take the exponent 2 times our coefficient, and we get 6x. Now here we have x to the first power. So if we take the derivative of x to the first power, we're going to get, I'm going to go ahead and show this. Normally we would know that this is just going to be 1, but we would have 1, which is the original exponent, x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent, we get the 0 power, which we'll simplify in a minute. And our last term is a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So we get, let me just show it here, we'll show the plus 0. This can now be simplified. x to the 0 power is 1, so our final answer in simplified form here would be 12x squared minus 6x plus 1. So again, that's just our basic derivative rules. Now the uh, next set of problems that we're going to look at 
uh, in the original format will not fit one of those given rules and we have to rewrite it or manipulate it to be able to use the rule and we're going to go through four different rewriting skills today the first is expanding parentheses all of the rules that we had on the previous page deal with having single terms so that rule would not apply here because we don't have just a plain x to a power here but we can use uh, foil or our or our uh, binomial expansion to rewrite this so before so we're still just working with f of x we haven't applied the rule so this step here is still called f of x so if we expand that we get x squared plus 6x plus 9 now it's in a format that we can derive so now we're going to take the derivative we're going to apply the rule so now our new function is now called f prime of x so here we get using the power rule 2x to the first power and here we're going to get 6x to the zero power which is just 6 so plus 6 so this is our answer for this one here we have uh, two, uh, two terms multiplied together and then this one is a polynomial so we're going to have to do a couple steps first we have to expand our parentheses so again, if we FOIL that, we're going to get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And now we have to distribute. So again, we're still originally working with our f of x function. So I have 12x cubed plus 12x squared plus 3x. Now we can, it's in a format, it's a polynomial. We can take its derivative, applying our rules. So we're going to take 3 times 12 is 36 and subtract 1 from the exponent. 2 times 12 is 24, subtract 1 from the exponent. And then 3x, our derivative is 3. And we're always going to want to try to factor our final derivative if we can. Uh, actually, over here, we could have factored out a, a 2. And here we can factor out a 3. So again, uh, if we have a parentheses in our problem, we're going to either use FOIL or distributive property or whatever to eliminate those parentheses. So that was skill 1. Let's look at skill 2. None of the uh, rules that we had handled having an x in the denominator. All of them are basic. Our most common rule was x to a power. So we're going to need to use our exponent rules to move the x's to the top. And we've reviewed earlier this year, if we move a term to the other side of a fraction, we change the sign of the exponent. So we could rewrite this as x to the negative 2 and now we have x to the nth power which we have a derivative rule our simple power rule so f prime of x is going to equal the old exponent and now we're going to subtract 1 from this exponent be careful with your subtraction negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 now we'll want to most of the time write our final answers without negative exponents so I have to move that x to the negative 3 to our denominator and change its sign. So that's our answer here. Here we can simplify that by uh, combining using our exponent rules here. So remember this is a fraction so we could write this as 2 thirds that's our fraction and if we combine the x's we have x to the minus 2 power. So now we can apply our rule. In this case, our constant is a fraction. So we have our exponent here, negative 2 times 2 thirds is negative 4 thirds. And then we subtract 1 from the x. And now we can rewrite that moving the x to the denominator. And our final answer is here. And again, this is the derivative of x. When we get into applications, we'll be using the original function and the derivative, so it's important that you name your functions appropriately. When we are rewriting, we are still dealing with our original function, f of x, and soon as you apply a derivative rules, now it is the name of that function is now a new function called f prime of x. Okay, now our last rule, our last rewriting skill is 
I'm sorry, I numbered these wrong, so the last skill was number two. Our third skill is getting rid of radical symbols. None of our derivative rules had radicals, and we can convert radicals to fractional exponents. So we can rewrite this as x to the two-thirds power. And now we can use our simple power rule to uh, take our derivative. We subtract 1 from the exponent. And we could now move that to our uh, denominator. And many times in calculus we will leave our answer like this or also many times if the original problem had radical notation we will rewrite our final answer using radical notation so we could also write this as and change that back to the cube root of x so either of these answers are going to be uh, correct most of the time here let's rewrite and I use y this time just to refresh our notation for derivatives on using y's So here I need to uh, undo this radical notation, and I have to take the square root of both pieces. So I've got square root of 2, and then square root of x would be x to the 1 half. I'm gonna, now I, my, I have to do two things. I want to rationalize this fraction, 1 over radical 2, and I'm going to move this to the top. So if I rewrite rationalizing 1 over square root of 2, I get radical 2 over 2 and then I have x to the negative one-half power. So now I can take my derivative. Now we could call this y prime, or more formally we would call it dy dx. Now I take my exponent times this, so negative one-half times this, I get negative radical two over four. And then I subtract one from my exponent. I can move my to the uh, my term with the negative exponent to the denominator. Or we could put this back into radical notation. So on the bottom we would have 4 and we have the square root of x cubed. Or we could factor out an x squared here and take its square root and we could write this as that. So Either of these would be proper radical notation, and this could be our final answer if you're being allowed to keep it as fractional exponents. All right, now I think uh, hopefully my numbering's right. We're going to go to the final skill here, dividing out. We'll be using that frequently. If you have a polynomial divided by a single term, we can rewrite that by dividing into each term. So 4x cubed divided by x squared is 4x. Negative 3x squared divided by x squared is negative 3. 2x divided by x squared is positive 2x to the minus 1 power. And finally, we have 5x to the negative 2 power. Now we have a term that, where we can use the sum and difference rule and our power rules. So if we find our derivative, dy dx, we have 4 times 4x, the derivative of that is 4. Derivative of a constant is 0. Now here we take negative 1 times 2, so we get minus 2x, and we subtract 1 from the exponent. And here, negative 2 times 5, and subtract 1 to the exponent. Now when we have expressions that have multiple terms with negative exponents, to simplify that, we're going to use GCF factoring. So given the coefficients, 4, 2, negative 10, I can factor out a 2. And then even though there's no x here, the rule is to factor out the x to the lowest power. So I'm going to factor out an x to the negative 3 power. And now we that's our GCF. So now our leftovers, we will be dividing each of these terms by this. So 4 divided by this is 2x cubed. When we divide here, we get negative 1x to the first power. And here, when we divide, the, x, the minus 3's cancel out, so we get minus 5. And our final step here is to get rid of our negative exponents. And 
that's going to be over x cubed. We want to put it in factored form because once we start using these derivative rules to solve or provide solutions to application problems, we will needing, be needing to take further steps uh, with these equations and with it in factored form, it's going to make it easier to solve. So I hope this helps and I hope you're able to apply the rules to the problems I've assigned you. Have a great day. Thank you.